Hello guys, this is Doran's Movies, and recently I've gotten a lot of questions about Warlords of Draenor and what I think about it and if it's worth buying. So I thought I'd finally make a video about it and kind of share my current thoughts on it, as I've been playing it since around the second wave of Alpha, which is around the start of June or something like that, so it's almost two months. And I haven't finished it yet, I've quested a lot, but I haven't done all the quests. And I've done it a lot, especially in the first few zones, at least I finished them five or six times. Now currently I mostly play it when I stream it on Twitch right now, but p apart from that I've played before and I made a few characters on like those level 100 servers and done some PvP, PvE exploration all that stuff. So by the newest records, World of Warcraft is losing subscribers and right now it's around 6.8 million, which is almost a million down since March. And I don't know how much that is in like actual subscriptions because th there are those like Chinese accounts that don't really count the same as the actual subscriptions, so I'm not really certain what the actual numbers are there. But of course a lot of people would say World of Warcraft is dying and... I generally think it's just a downside of the game, I mean no business can keep growing at an upward spiral for eternity and there always has to be a few down moments, maybe more down, more up, just, just kinda depends. And I know most of you know what the main reason is why it's losing subscribers and that is pretty much because they haven't released any content since September 2013, which is in my opinion terrible because they only added Siege of Orgrimmar, which is kind of a cool raid. But a lot of people finished it already in the few months, even it before the end of 2013, so yeah, that's not really that great. They also had the Timeless Isle, which a lot of people got bored of, even though it was kind of unique and had a lot of like cool stuff they added. So apart from that, they only added a few minor things, like a few mounts and all of that, like some minor changes, which logically isn't enough to sustain the WoW player base for more than a year since they decided to not get a patch between the release of Warlords of Draenor. But personally, I believe that WoW will have a big rise in subscribers on the release date of Warlords of Draenor, because from what I've seen, they have a lot of things to offer and the expansion itself really really has a lot of potential. Plus they also said they plan on doing these yearly expansions, which logically means that all of those additional patches like 5.123 or 6.123 for they gotta add that in like a year span, which would probably mean that we'll be getting new like additional patches with new raids and all that stuff every few months, which is really great. I mean, if, if they actually do it, because no one knows if that's true. I mean, Blizzard does promise a lot of stuff and sometimes they don't really deliver it or they scrap it and all that stuff. Now I'm gonna go over a few points of why I think Warlords of Xenor has much potential and why the expansion can be a lot different from the previous one. Alright, so firstly, I know a lot of people complain about this and it's the game graphics. Now, the game visually looks a lot better than the previous expansions and especially compared to vanilla. I mean, some people think, even because it's a 10 year old game, that the graphics are still the same as they were in 2004 or 5, but they actually changed them a lot and like you can tell a difference. And even like PC requirements are a lot different than it there were before. And you can tell the difference mostly like from the new environment models and the textures. I mean they look a lot better and contain a lot more detail in them. And they even changed some of the older models in the game. Like the raptors, even though they're on Draenor as well, they're not just on Azeroth. But they added new like these raptor models or even wolves. All of these new creatures, class hoof. And pretty much every creature that, that would be in Worlds of Draenor. And most importantly, I guess, is that they change the character models, which I know a lot of people have different opinions on them, but I, I know that a majority of people likes them, even though some might be a bit better than the other. But the thing is, they contain a lot more polygons, and on some models, I mean even 10 times the polygons from the previous one, so if these had like a thousand or so, these have like 10,000, which means that they contain a lot more detail. And when models contain detail, that actually means that they can make animations a lot better. And you can even tell like from the animations, they're more fluid and more realistic and more like detailed than they were before. And yeah, I would say the graphics are a lot better compared to the old stuff. And I know they did sort of improve it in every expansion bit by bit. They changed a few models, I guess. You could say that Cataclysm made the most changes, but that's kind of world related, didn't really change the graphics too much. But I think model wise and all of the textures, I, I think Worlds of Draenor stuff kind of looks the best from all the expansions. 
Now secondly and most important in my opinion is questing and the story. Now there are a lot of good stuff when it comes to this and a lot of new things but there also are some inconsistencies that kinda bother me a bit but not too much. So I can tell you from experience that questing is around 10 times better and more fun than in previous expansions and that they added a lot more aspects to it. I mean almost every quest they're done he has some sort of a thing to it, some sort of a cinematic, some sort of a adventure type, like it leads to something. It's not like as it was before, like collect 10 of these, kill 10 of these and return 10 of these, then go back, go to the next camp, do the same, and maybe at the end there is like a little event thing and that's pretty much it, but, but here there's pretty much always an event. Now you actually feel like you're a big part of the story and that is not just in the first introduction request. I mean you can feel it through all the zones so it's not like they just try to pull your attention and start to like kinda get lazy afterwards. But the actual introduction quest that happens in Tanan jungle is really fun. I've made a video on it, it's from the alpha I believe, or at least the start of the beta so some stuff has changed but you can check that out on the channel but it's really fun. And it's kind of like an adventure cinematic thing and a lot of things happen you see all of the warlords in like tied up in this small zone which is kind of interesting in my opinion so at the start of like the introduction the quest line you kind of experience all of the foes you'll be facing off later in the game and the entire as I said like the entire introduction the quest line is around one hour long or so but it it feels kind of like an action movie or something like that. It's pretty cool. I mean the interaction quest probably is the best but after that there's a lot of really good stuff. Now after that lines go to the Shadow Moon Valley and Horde goes to the Frostfire Ridge. And that is pretty much where you set up your garrison. Now I made a video about garrisons with like a detailed explanation of every building. So if you want to check that out on my channel, if you don't really understand how garrisons work, you can find it. Now a really cool thing that is kind of completely unique is that in every zone you go like after Frostfire Ridge or Shadow Moon Valley, you get this little mini garrison like an outpost. In previous expansions for example you had like one camp, you go there, finish all the quests, then move on to the next thing and the next thing and then you go to the next zone and pretty much all of that. But here you kinda enter a new zone like Gorgon for example and you do a few intro quests that are kinda interesting and then you form like a little camp of your own. So it's sort of like a garrison dispatch thing, like a little outpost related to your garrison. And you can choose between two buildings to be the focus of the camp and that kinda decides on which like garrison ability you will get as every zone has a different like cooldown ability you can use. So for example you have the artillery or the gladiators or even the like you can call in your garrison army to attack the the enemies and all of that. So that is a pretty cool thing and it's pretty unique. I mean it, we didn't really see that before. Another thing is as I kinda mentioned at the start they added a lot of these new quest types and all of them kinda have like these elements from different games like RPGs and all of that. So sometimes you might be doing like a checking quest, while in other quest lines you might be fighting off a giant battle that comes in multiple waves and with bosses and all that. So as I said it's not just fetch quests as it was was in previous expansions. Even though there are a few of them like it's still an MMO, every like MMO has those quests but they're not like so significant as they were before. Now you also have these bonus objectives that are not really related to any quest but they're kinda marked on the map and once you reach that zone you start this bonus quest that gives you like a reward if you fulfill the objective. Also a good thing is in this expansion they kinda decided to pull as many legendary Warcraft Lord characters as possible and you will see a lot of figures such as Rexar, Roken, if not though Roken he's a troll from... Warcraft 3 like the extra campaign, we got Orgrim Doomhammer, a lot of other clans, races and all of those things that were mentioned in the lore before but may have not been explained so well. And this is also related to a thing I don't like as well because they kinda completely changed or removed some of the old lore without all that much like explanation or inf information. Like some clan backstories are kinda changed and their character models like designs and all of that which might even be a good thing because when they made all of the lore stuff up like 20 years ago, I don't think they had such a vision of the entire franchise. Now another unique aspect would be the exploration and a lot of it, I mean you can feel like the zones are huge when you use a ground mount when you don't have flying mounts. I know people complain about flying mounts but I think it's better maybe for the ground mounts because the zones just feel really big and you just have a lot of exploration of that. And in your pet, for example, you might find like a dead orc messenger that you you can examine and see his like entire story, like what he was hearing, and kind of like continue on his quest that he couldn't fulfill. Or even like a lone hut in the mountains where you can like fight off a few waves of orcs. Like you have like in this lone orc just hiding in like a hut, and then he gets attacked or something like that, so you can like help him 
Which is pretty cool in my opinion, like you can find all of this stuff without like getting a quest or anything like that. Now if you didn't really know, they kinda added the timeless style in 5.4 because they wanted to kinda test the grounds and kinda experiment some of the new features to see how the players would react to it and you can see like the, the entire Draenor takes a lot of the aspects of the timeless style so you can see like they took a lot of the feedback from the timeless style and added it into this expansion which is in my opinion pretty good and pretty unique compared to the previous expansion. Now I'm not really going to get really deep into PvP or PvE as I haven't done it much myself and a lot of stuff is not finished yet, they still gotta work on some endgame content. But you can see a lot of changes that were made to it, I mean every class was changed in some way and a lot of spells were removed and also everything was kinda scaled. So for example if you're a level 90 you'll have around 50k health instead of like 500,000 health and a lot of different dungeons were added, raids which is pretty much in every expansion. It might even be a bit less, but I haven't really done all of them. But I can like at least I can tell you that the environment's a lot better and some of the mechanics and all that stuff. So honestly, I think it's worth buying Worlds of Draenor. And if you plan on getting back into World of Warcraft, now would kinda be the perfect time for it, as you even have the level 90 boost. Now I'm not saying like everything is perfect, like Worlds of Draenor is great and everything is amazing, it's the best game ever. But I can at least tell you from my playtime that I feel like it's a lot better than the previous expansion when it comes to all the aspects I mentioned previously and I'm aware that they did some bad stuff as well such as removing the faction hubs or even removing a few islands of the map that were supposed to be there they also postponed or scrapped some stuff they promised on BlizzCon but judging by my general impression if you want to get back into WoW once World of Draenor is out I would definitely say go for it Alright, that is all I have for this discussion. Thanks a lot for taking your time to watch this video and do share your thoughts in the comment section below on what you think about World of Draenor and if you don't have a subscription, are you gonna like get it again? And don't forget to like, favorite and subscribe as it really helps out the channel and keeps all these videos going. Again, thanks for watching and see you next time.